Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, it was the first country's first Prime Minister, and this may, of course, arouse the ire of the member for Shepley if he was still in his place, but I will say it. In politics, if you want something talked about, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. And I personally am extremely pleased that our current Prime Minister is in place because I think she is taking on an unbelievably difficult task and delivering it with intellect and yeah, grace yeah. and clarity. And she has made it very, very clear to this House, regardless of how we campaign and voted, what the process will be and what the time frame will be. And for that, I am truly grateful. The statement in this case is, however, a little incorrect because it has been men and women over many years who have debated endlessly in this place and elsewhere the European question, something that was a monumental talking point when I came to this place and which rather confused me, I have to say, because it did not seem to be talking about the issues that face this country and will continue to face our country post our departure from the European Union, our, pro our puzzling and troubling productivity gap in British industry, our lack of skills, our lack of investment in education, our problems with the low savings rate that means families have so little to fall back on and the country has very little to draw on for investments going forward. But suddenly, on June the 23rd, we all went from talking to doing. And this is not the place, I totally agree with Honourable members to rerun either the referendum yeah, yeah. or the arguments yeah, and people yeah. will know I was a Remain supporter. But I, like so many who have spoken, was appalled, appalled by the quality of the debate and the quality of the conversations that took place. We were asking the country to make a very, very profound decision on the basis of slogans, to boil down extremely complicated questions and trade-offs into a single yes or no question, spiced up with anti-immigration rhetoric. I'm sorry for honourable members who believe that this was not what the Leave campaign represented, but I thought the poster of people wanting to come into this country, the breaking point poster, was a particularly low point in this debate. Of course, the conversation was also sullied by misrepresentation over funding, and we have debated today the 350, the 100 million, whatever it was, and also foreign policy. What has happened to those conversations about Turkey, who was lined up to join the EU, if you listen to many members uh, campaigning or, or for certain sides? But equally, the Remain side of the equation, Project Fear, I completely accept. We were not given positive messages to campaign on. What about staying connected, staying relevant in the world, rather than time trying to frighten people based on theoretical models, which, thanks to quantitative easing and an interest rate cut, have yet to come true. But since that point, since the referendum result, we have a government who is very ably led by our Prime Minister, who has taken the pragmatic approach that we are where we are and what we need is strength and leadership. And as the Right Honourable Member for Leeds Central said earlier today, the major problem facing us and representatives of other Western democracies is a crisis of trust in our institution and our politicians. And therefore, I will, like so many others, be voting with the government tomorrow yeah, night yeah, to yeah, support yeah, the triggering yeah, of Article yeah, 50. Yeah. And we will never be able to prove, Madam Deputy Speaker, the counterfactual, what would have happened if we had not voted to leave, what would have happened without the depreciation in currency, without the changes already happening in the European Union. But I, for one, feel ill-informed about this debate, and I was minded to go back and look at the conversations that were held in this House at the time of joining the EU, conversations that started with the publication of a white paper in 1967 and ended up in a referendum in 1975. And I have read the speeches given by my predecessor but one, Charles Morrison, who contributed to those debates and who was an arch-European, uh, I'm pleased to say. He was given the opportunity in extensive debates over six white papers in the formation of a manifesto for the 1970 election uh, and multiple, multiple conversations with Parliament. And indeed, the white paper presented by the Heath government in 1971 reported back on the progress of negotiations that had been made until that point between the British government and members of the small European Union and indeed set out what areas still needed to be uh, discussed. 
So compared to my predecessor, I have to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, I do not feel I am well informed about the process and what the trade-offs are for the British economy. And I do refute wholeheartedly the idea that people voted one way or another in the referendum based on this perfect knowledge of all the facts. I sat through many a hustings in which my opponent said, it's not for us to define what leave looks like. You're the government. It's your job. We just know we want to be out. And everybody's view of Brexit is very slightly different. So how do we assure ourselves and our constituents as we get to the end of this two-year process that we are making the right decision? I would urge first the government to be as open and transparent as possible and to bring forward that white paper before the committee stage of the current bill. And I would ask the government, when we get to the end of the process, when we know there will be a binary offer, we are either in some form of relationship with the European Union or we are not to say what the economic consequences of those deals look like. We cannot possibly sit down and make an assessment of what a free trade world might look like, like or indeed a relationship with the EU, plus or minus any economic contribution that we would be asked to make, without understanding what the implications are for, for our country. It may, mean, may be, Madam Deputy Speaker, that we have made a good decision for all the wrong reasons, but I do not yet feel that we have the right information to justify that to the country. Yeah. Yeah.